of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Hello everyone, dear students and dear teachers. Today I'm going to be with you to talk about another subject in Unit 2 and the subject is entitled to and enough with infinitive. Okay? To and enough with infinitive. Be careful. Infinitive means two plus base. The word infinitive means two plus base. Base, what does the word base mean? The word base means the base form of a particular verb. That's to say, it is without affixes uh, or suffixes like S, E, S, D, E, D, and I, N, G. So, first of all, let's come to the meaning of to and enough. Let's know what does the word to mean and what does the, enough, the word enough uh, mean. Uh, they indicate degree. Both words, to and enough, they indicate degree. That's to say, they tell us the amount of that thing. To, the word to, first, or firstly, the word to means what? Means more than what is needed. We talk about something that more, that is more than what we need which is more than what we want, which is more than sufficient, or that thing is more than necessary. And of course, uh, the sentence that contains the word to gives a negative idea, okay? When do we use to? When we want to talk about something that has a negative meaning, Okay, don't forget that the word to and the word enough, both of them, they indicate degree. They give us the degree, the amount of something, whether that amount is necessary or more than necessary or less than necessary even. For example, let's read this example about two. I'm too hungry to concentrate. I'm too hungry to concentrate. In this sentence, we have the word two, which indicates the degree of being hungry. It means that I am so hungry, or I am hungry more than what a person used to be. So, being hungry, is something frustrating for us. So why? Because we cannot concentrate. Secondly, the word enough. What does the word enough mean? The word enough means the necessary amount or the amount that we need or the amount that we want or the right amount and of course enough gives a positive idea the word enough gives a positive idea it is opposite to the word to which gives a negative idea okay we use enough to say we have as much or as many as we need that is to say we talk about something which is sufficient. It is the exact amount that we need. In this case, we use what? We use the word enough. Example, you are good enough to start a conversation in English. You are good enough to start a conversation in English. Be careful. The word conver conversation. Sometimes we hear from students and teachers even. They mispronounce the word conversation. 
they, I don't know, they, they pronounce it like conversation. The, the letter S here in this word, it's not Z sound, it is S sound. We have to, to pronounce it like conversation, conversation. It is not conversation. Be careful. So, you are good enough to start a conversation in English. In this sentence, as you see, we are talking about what? We are talking about someone who, who is English is good that he can use it, that he can start conversation with, with English that he has, with the language, with the language that he has. It means English language. So he is good enough to start conversation in English. It means my English is good enough that I can speak in English. Thirdly, we have not enough. So, as we said, two means more than necessary. And enough means the necessary amount. What about not enough? Not enough means less than necessary. And remember that. Words like to, enough, not enough, they de indicate degree. So, here, not enough, as we said, means less than necessary. It means less than what is needed, less than what is wanted, less than what is sufficient, or less than sufficient. So, an example like, we haven't got enough time to relax. We haven't got enough time to relax. What does that sentence mean? That sentence means the amount of the time that we have is not sufficient. The amount of the time that we have is not sufficient, so we cannot relax. Why? Because we have not enough time. Because we have not such amount of time that we can relax. And that's why we say we haven't got enough time to relax. Okay, uh, now uh, I'm going to talk about the pattern. That's to say the structure of two. Okay, two, pattern number one. Pattern number one. Two plus adjective, adverb, or noun plus infinitive. That's to say the word two the word to comes before adjectives, adverbs, and nouns. Take care, please. Be careful that the adjectives and the adverbs or the nouns all together, or any of them, they come, where do they come? They come after the word to. Or, in, uh, in other words, the word to comes before the adjectives. The word to comes before the adverbs. The word to comes before the nouns. And then we have in infinitive. You know what's the meaning of infinitive? Infinitive means to plus the base form of the verb. Examples. It is too hot to, to go outside. As you see, it's too hot to go outside. First of all, you see, we have the word to, okay? And we have the word hot. Hot in this sentence is adjective. And you see, the word to comes before the adjectives. As you see in the pattern, it is written, or I have written the word to before the adjectives. So, to, comes before the adjective and then finally infinitive plus infinitive infinitive means what well, infinitive means to plus the base form of the verb the other example or another example she is too young to go to college she is too young to go to college as you see the word young is also adjective and we have the word to before the adjective. 
And finally, we have infinitive, which means two plus base. And finally, the last example about two, it's too early to wake up. It's too early to wake up. You see, two and two plus base. Here, in these sentences, the word to gives a negative idea. For example, the first sentence, it is too hard to go outside. So the word to indicates the degree of the adjective. It gives us more information about that adjective. It gives more information about that adjective, which is hot. It means it is hot to a degree that we cannot go outside, okay? We cannot go outside, so it gives a negative meaning. Now we come to pattern two, pattern two of the word two. That's to say the second subtraction of the word two. As you see, two also comes before nouns, but sometimes the nouns come with the word much and many. When we have much, what do, what do we have after the word much? We have uncountable noun. Uncountable noun, that's to say singular noun. What? Singular. Singular noun. And the word many goes with what? Goes with countable nouns. That's to say plural. Or plural plural nouns and then we have infinitive as you know that the word infinitive means two plus the base form of the verb so I repeat it once more the word two comes before adjectives adverbs and nouns we talked about adjectives and adverbs here we talk about to coming before the nouns and sometimes with the noun that is used in the sentence we may face words like much and many and we have to know that the word the word much comes with an uncountable noun with an uncountable noun that's to say it is uncountable we cannot count that noun okay it means it is singular when something is singular or, or something is uncountable, we cannot add S, which is plural S. It should be singular. Uncountable nouns should be singular. So, with the word much, we have a singular noun. We have an uncountable noun. And with the word many, we have countable nouns. That's to say, the nouns that are countable, or they are plural, as you see in these two sentences. The first sentence, I have too much homework to do. I have too much homework to do. You see the word much and the word homework. Homework here, it, it is an uncountable noun, and it is singular at the same time. As we said, the word much comes with uncountable nouns or singular nouns so the word homework here is both uncountable and singular and finally we have the infinitive which means two plus base the second sentence there are too many problems to solve there are too many problems to solve if you see the word many okay the word many comes with the word problems, which is plural. The word that is plural means it is countable. And that is to say, the word many comes with a countable noun, which is plural. Okay? And, uh, and finally, as you see, we have two plus base, which means infinitive. This is the two patterns uh, about two. Okay, now let's take the patterns of enough. That's to say the subtractions of enough. As you see on the whiteboard, 
enough part from one. That's say subtraction number one because enough has two subtractions. Subtraction number one is part number one. Number one is adjective, adverb, plus enough plus infinitive. And as we said, the word infinitive means what? The word infinitive means two plus the base form of the verb. So you see, adjective, adverb, plus, enough, plus infinitive. The word enough comes after the adjectives and the adverbs. The word enough comes after the adjectives and the adverbs. It's opposite to, it's opposite to the word to, which comes before the adjectives and the adverbs. We talked about to and we said that to comes before, before the adjectives and the adverbs and the nouns, the nouns also. But the word enough comes after, comes after. To comes before, enough comes after the adjectives and the adverbs. And then we have infinitive, as we said, to plus the base form of the verb. In the first example, he is old enough to join the army. He is old enough to join the army. Let's come to the sentence and see. Old. The word old here, adjective. And you see, the word enough comes after the ad adjective. The word enough comes after the adjective as it is written in the pattern. And finally, we have infinitive. So, he is old enough to join the army. When we have an adjective or an adverb in a particular sentence, so the words enough and two plus base, the words enough and the infinitive, they come together, okay? They come together. When enough is used in a sentence that contains an adjective or an adverb, in this case, the word or the word enough and the infinitive, they come together, okay? They come together. The second sentence, she is clever enough to pass the test. She is clever enough to pass the test. As you see here also, the word clever is adjective. And you see the word enough comes after the adjectives. And then we have the infinitive. The same. When we have an adjective in a particular sentence, so the words enough on the infinitive, they come together. We do not have any word between enough and to plus base. They come together. And the last sentence about pattern number one is, I speak loudly enough to be here. I speak loudly enough to be here. You see, the word loudly is an adverb. The word or the word loudly is an adverb. And this is the word that we are talking about. So you see, the word enough comes after the adverb. The word enough comes after the adjective as it is written in the pattern. And finally, we have infinitive. Again, when enough is used in a sentence that contains an adverb, both enough and the infinitive, both enough and the, the infinitive, they come, they come together. This is part one, that's to say, the first structure about enough. Now we come to part two. That's to say, subtractor two. You know, in the first pattern, uh, we used adjectives and adverbs with enough. Now, we use nouns with enough. 
So let's see. When, do, where, where do we put enough with nouns? We put enough before the nouns, as you see. Enough plus noun plus infinitive. Two plus base. This is what infinitive meaning. This what infinitive means. So, pattern number one is quite different from pattern number two. You see, we put enough after the adjectives and the adverbs. But here in pattern two, we put enough before. We put enough before the nouns, okay? That's to say, between the word enough and the infinitive, we have now before. The word enough and the infinitive, we have now. Or in other words, we use enough before nouns. We use enough after adjectives and adverbs. In this example, as you see, we have enough time to relax. We have enough time to relax. The word time is noun. The word time is noun. Okay. The word time is noun. And you see, enough here in this sentence comes before the noun. And finally, we have infinitive. That's to say, two plus base. So, as I said, nouns occur, nouns occur, or nouns come between enough and the infinitive, or nouns come after enough, or enough comes before the nouns. All of them give the same meaning. The second sentence, I have enough money to buy a new car. I have enough money to buy a new car. So the word enough here, it is used before money, which is noun. Okay? So this is our pattern. Our pattern says that we have to use the word enough before nouns. And then what? And then the infinitive. Infinitive, which means two plus space. As I said, we have a word between enough and the infinitive, which is what? Which is noun. And this is, or these are the two patterns about enough. Uh, and now uh, I'm going to talk about using not enough instead of to. Using not enough instead of to or vice versa. It means using to instead of not enough. As you see here, the sentence like this. The questions are too difficult to answer. The questions are too difficult to answer. If we use not enough instead of the word to, what we have to do? What are the steps that to follow? Step number one, rewrite the subject. You see, the subject is the questions. The questions. Step number two, negate the VB. Negate the VB, it means when we have a positive verb B, we have to change it into negative. As you see, R becomes R not. And then, thirdly, leave out two. Let's leave out two. Uh, and write the opposite of the given adjective. Of course, after Two, we have an adjective. Step number three says, write the opposite, opposite of the given adjective. The adjective like difficult, or the opposite of the adjective difficult is what? You know, it is easy. Okay? So, writing the opposite of the given adjective. And finally, write enough. Here is enough. And the complement the complement to answer. That's to say, the infinitive in the sentence. The questions are too difficult to answer. As I said, the first step is rewriting the subject. 
and the second step is adding not to the VB adding not to the VB that's to say negating the verb be from a into aunt or or sorry are not and then leaving out the word to leaving out the word to means immediately writing down enough in the same place no take care students when we leave out the word to do not put enough in the same place you know why because here as we talked about to we said that to comes before adjectives adverbs and nouns but with enough enough comes after the adjectives enough comes after the adjectives so we have to write the opposite of the adjective huh? we have to write the opposite of the adjective and then enough to together as I talked about that point as I told you I said that when we use enough in a sentence that contains adjectives or adverbs so the word enough and the infinitive come together as you see here enough and the infinitive they are together okay let's take another example now we have an example uh, contains the word to I'm going to replace the word to by not enough okay I'm going to replace the word to by not enough you see he is too young to join the army he is too young to join the army the first step is rewriting the subject and the second step is as we said negating the verb be the third step is leaving out the word to and writing the opposite of the given adjective which is old you see writing the um, the uh, opposite of the given adjective and then write down enough and the complement so let's take another example another example for example she is not clever enough to answer to answer my question she is not clever enough to answer my question in this sentence uh, let's replace the word enough by the word to the first step as we said rewriting the subject she now here we have a negative form of VB that's a verb to be here we change the negative into positive that's to say it will be is okay and then we have adjective you know that uh, if we leave out enough and using to instead of that we have to write the word to before the adjectives you know that the first step is to what to give or to write the opposite of the adjective clever the opposite of the word clever is uh, lazy so we have to write down to we have to write to before the adjectives because this is what I said from the beginning of this lesson we said that to comes before the adjectives adverbs and nouns and that's why we write down to first and then the adjective and then we leave out enough we rewrite down the infinitive and the complement so she is too lazy to answer my question uh, this is all what I have to talk about for this lesson Goodbye and see you soon. God willing.